What's up crypto junkies, it's Jay, and what you're about to see is a live stream be between myself and Cosmos, who is really our community in-house Mad Hatter bot expert. Now you followed along into now part four of the Mad Hatter madness essentially, which is a strategy that we originally talked about. You saw the, ro the video way back when with Royal from late 2017 on a strategy that included Bollinger Bands, MACD, and RSI, right? So now here we are at the next instance of this and the next iteration, which is taking the strategy that you learned, the indicators that you learned using that day trading, and now we're talking about automating it with a bot. Now this requires a different mindset. This requires a different approach. And so this video, is almost an hour and a half long so you know get a coffee or you know get some water sit back relax and enjoy this because we're going to delve into not only the mindset piece but really the the nuts and bolts of this and you get to see him tuning some mad header bots live through several several bots as he's kind of talking through his mindset and talking about how he looks at this so this is a video that you definitely should check out if you want to take your Mad Hatter skills to the next level and you want to automate your efforts while once again getting the benefits of removing that emotion. So let's go ahead and roll that now. All right, welcome to the stream, everybody. Crypto J here, joined with Cosmos. Today, we're going to talk about Mad Hatter bots. Yes, Mad Hatter bots with the uh, the Hass bot, Hass bot, Hass Hass, whatever you want to call it, guys. It's, it's cool. It's totally cool. You want to overemphasize the A, you want to kind of skip over the A a little bit. It's all good with us. Um, but we're going to talk bots today. And this is really the session that I think a lot of people have been waiting for because the Mad Hatter strategy started in our community. Okay. It was first brought to our community by Royal, who's a part of the team at uh, Haas Online. I'm incredibly thankful for him joining our community and, you know, just being a part of what we're doing. And so he came into the community and we started these day trading channels and the voice chat with the day trading channels became so popular. You know, we had 50, 60, I think the highest we had was somewhere over 70 people on at one time, I counted, and uh, which is completely obnoxious on a Discord. I don't know if you've ever been on that, but it's it's really hard to follow a conversation. But that strategy, needless to say, has taken off. I've shot in three videos on the Crypto Junkies channel, one which has gotten over 80,000 views to this day, and is probably one of our most popular videos that we've ever made. And it's essentially going through the Mad Hatter strategy. Then I have two subsequent videos, one going through the, a deeper look at RSI, MACD, and Bollinger Bands, which is the comprised strategy. Those are the indicators we use. And then the third video, I bring up the screener settings, the screener settings that you would use in TradingView, which are just settings that they basically find you pickups. They find you pairs that, are, that have a lot of the traits that we're looking for, uh, which we call setups, okay? So today we're going to talk about the strategy. We're going to talk about how Cosmos came into this and started using this. I want to note the significance here. The reason why this is probably by far the best guy you could be talking to about Mad Hatter bots is because he started using it the day it was launched. He was one of the people that gave feedback to the actual developers themselves on errors and mistakes and issues within the bot itself, now subsequently helped make it the way it is today. He has a, a lot of, I guess you could say, exclusive knowledge that I think if you're paying attention, if you're showing up and fully present with us here today, you'll be able to walk away with. So just give me one sec. I'm going to tag our moderators here and we'll get started. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Joy. That's me. Welcome, my friends. All right. Uh, King Moy, what's up? QJ, what's up? Gail, what's up? Great to have you on. Gail, uh, by the way, she's on the live stream with us. And uh, she, I think, pretty quickly jumped into the bot and started uh, playing around with it yesterday. I started seeing some of her uh, setups posted and some of her settings posted. We have a dedicated channel well, category with sub channels and a voice channel specifically for both Profit Trailer and Haspot. Even though I'll say in the community, I think it's a little bit more ha uh, Haspot usage versus Profit Trailer. And I know a lot of people use Profit Trailer to find setups for Haspot because they work kind of differently. So whereas with Haspot, I have to find the, the pair that I want to operate myself. And I don't know if I'm giving away a big secret here, but I mentioned this the other day and it was like a bombshell to people. So I'll mention it here. With Profit Trailer, it finds the pair for you through the settings. With Haspot, you decide the pair and pick the settings. See the difference? So if I use Profit Trailer to find the pair, then on Haspot, I can just take the winning pair with the settings and scale it from there. So I don't know. Uh, if that's like a huge epiphany, because I've never used Profit Trailer, but from my understanding of how it works, 
that could be an essential strategy for you. So anyway, we have dedicated channels in the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, if you're watching this replay, no sweat. Uh, look underneath in the description. All the links that you need will be there. Joining the Discord chat server, that link, it's free to join. You just have to go through a small process where you agree to a few things. It's just testing to make sure you're paying attention. You have to obviously approve your uh, account via email and phone, and then you're in. I don't want trolls. I don't want people who are malicious. So the more barriers we put in place, the higher quality of people we get into the community. Over 5,200 people strong now, my friends. So uh, we're back to growing. I love it. Even though we're in a bearish market right now, we're back to growing. My goal is still 10,000 uh, in that server. And I'm really excited for you guys listening in and tuning into the replay to be a part of that. Outside of that, you'll find some links for Twitter to follow us on Twitter. Cosmos, my guest today, the Mad Hatter genius. His uh, Twitter is also on there, or I need his YouTube, which I'll get from him and I'll link to you guys as well. So you can give him a follow, subscribe and hit the bell notification on him as well. Smash a like on this video if you like what we're about to dive into, if you like what I'm saying so far. And then there's a link for the mailing list so that you never miss out. No matter what happens with social media, you'll, you'll get to uh, get to stay up to date with us. All right, so let's go. Let's let's go into this. This is, just so you know, if you're just jumping on, we're talking Hasbot. So if you go to Has Online, you can get this bot yourself. If you use Crypto Junkie as a promo code, just as it sounds, you will get 20-ish percent off. You don't have to like us or even listen to the rest of this video, but if you want 20% off, use the promo code, okay? And uh, it applies to all license types and levels, all right? So yeah, let's dive in. Feeling good today, by the way. Got a little bit of sleep. So I see my face is still showing up. I thought I got rid of that, but it, it's cool. I just, I didn't want it to take away from the bot, but um, good thing I wasn't picking my nose or anything while I was talking. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I think it's small enough and up in the right-hand corner that it won't affect this. But Cosmos, go ahead and take it away. Let's start actually with last live stream. Him and I set up a uh, ping pong bot and let's check in on that and see how that ended up doing before we get started. Okay, that ping pong bot was Fuel Pair, I think. Yeah, this one, yeah, this is the one. It, and it, it, it for, for the for the whole day when we when we launched it and it stopped at 11% because the stop loss was not set properly. So yeah, it did 11% and since then it's just stopped the same day basically. How how many hours it took like it took um 7 hours then eight hours for it to, to make 11% and then it just stopped. Just so that you guys, like I know that Cosmos does an incredibly good job of staying even keel. Like, yeah, no big deal, 11%, 20%. There are people that have this bot that don't make any money. Okay, there are people that have these bots that don't, uh, that lose money. And there's a lot of people that have these bots that don't use them. To get 11%, it's very significant um, because we want to make money, right? For a day trader to make 11% on, an, on one trade, on one pair, they would be posting that all over Twitter, right? They'd be going nuts. I'm the man, I'm the best, right? So just keep that in mind that uh, some of these bots, you know, so many pairs, so many exchanges that this bot can work on, so many different bots there's a lot of money to be made. If you, if you look at how it traded, it's it's got just two places in the graph history from from that moment onwards, when it, where it did trade, and those places they are like if you were to shoot some sort of like like a, a rock across this plane, it would probably fly through this like two places where it would shoot. And settings for Mad Hatter bots are something like that. I mean, they they direct the bot to trade on a certain slope or I don't know how you call that thing, a trajectory um, on the market. And if there is trading going on there, it would trade, you know, for, for, this, for, the, for a given setting. Well, Scalper is not a Mad Hatter bot, obviously, but the same logic may apply to it as well if you set it up properly. Today, we're talking about Mad Hatter bots, so there won't be much scalpers or anything out there. There will be me trying to probably fine tune this uh, bot for the data coin uh, for current market conditions. And we'll go through some of the bots that I've made in the past. And as you can see right now, uh, on these two servers, I'm not running many Mad Hatters, just scalpers and ping pong bots because those seem to be interesting for me right now. Mad Hatter is just too boring for me to spend a lot of time on. Um, so yeah, let me show you what a simple ping pong bot did for me in what, since 18th of June, I launched the 18th of June with a very small amount just to play with it, just to test how that thing works. Cause I don't think I've ever run them until today, like properly those bots. And when Ma Major made his amazing applications for just screening every coin out there, I've decided to try and run more of them now. And I'm just spending a lot of time doing them because they seem to profit quite well if you know what you're doing. And this one, it, 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 it did like 28% on data coin within what, eight, since 18th. Today we have 22nd already. Four days, yeah. Four days, yeah. And it's done just four trades. 
well, buy, sell, buy, sell. And this is amazing in my view, at least. Yeah, um, I'd say so as well. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting how it shows on the chart, though. Just went bought right here on 19th for the second time and sold it yeah. not well yesterday evening, basically. Cool, nice. Um, yeah. Got nothing else to say about it. Yeah, so as we talk through Mad Hatter, let's, you know, I, I really want you to um, share kind of how you uh, how you went about doing it. Because last live stream, we got into it, and I think we got maybe a little too esoteric, which uh, some people can follow, some people can't. You essentially dove yeah, yeah, in yeah. and learned first. And so let's talk through some of those things too. And then I had a suggestion from somebody I just saw it though, before, as we were already on the stream, they suggested we open up the screener settings and try and find pairs and setups that way uh, and set one up live. So what I would suggest we do is let's go with what you had in mind. And then maybe at the end, I can pull up trading view on my end. I've got the screener mm -hmm. settings, the same ones you use, and then I'll kind of dish you a couple pairs and let's see if we can set some up. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds cool. quite good. Since I began playing with Matt Hatchers, uh, my approach to tuning the bot has changed quite dramatically and quite a few times, to be honest. It's, it sort of it began with a simple uh, brute force, you know, approach to settings where you just use this basic view, like like this one right here. Oh, sorry. Uh, and just just try and try and tune those settings to something that creates profits. You you just go literally backtest one day change a single number like here and then back, back test another one change the number again and then back test and then back test and so forth and so forth and at some point you would get some kind of trading going on it would be exciting because it's, it's your first bot you are just not not knowing what you're doing and you're getting trading going on but what you get is something not positive and you don't know what to do from that moment onwards. And if you're like me and you don't really have many obligations in life, um, no family, which you've brought up, no job, well, official one, I've got a few businesses running. I had a lot of free time on my hands and I tend not to sleep often. So, you know, and, and, and I've got this habit of uh, getting into something so deeply and so, uh, th so that I'll just, I, I literally spent first couple of weeks just playing with these settings, trying to figure out or what, what values I could put here to make this thing work. Uh, and after a while, like um, well, maybe 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 two weeks of not sleeping two to three days at a time with sleep after that, of course, I realized that there are some interesting patterns that I found. And the first ones were that um, the more RSI, it, it had a dramatic impact on trading. And Major, he would he would usually do a basic, at, at first he would do a basic setup for it, like 2, um, 20, and 80, I think it was, which would look um, something like, well, let me show you how that looks, like a huge uh, graph with many, many, many different candles going up and down on, on here. And it would create a lot of trade signals, which were not clear, you know, which were not clean. It would, it would buy and sell at at random places. I kind of began trying to move up those those numbers because as you move up RSI, uh, the, the, the bands, they become narrower. And you can see highs and lows much, 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 much more clearer. This play with RSI kind of gave me the way to go forward with everything. And it became like the main uh, part for, for starting ma making a boat really. And I did not use this screen uh, at first because it was it was even slower than it is right now. Uh, when you when you change a single setting here, it would have to update uh, the entire screen, and it would take a, f a couple of seconds every time. So I realized that just by being in this menu over here and just playing with one, well, it it, it, it used to be here. You just go back test and press back testing by hand. It it was much faster than doing it with uh, with that other view basically because it was to get stuck all the time. But I went on and continued doing that for another week or so, and at some point I just I just got a coin. Uh, I think it was DLT. Maybe it's here somewhere, actually. Which uh, I've managed to get to something like 40% uh, profit in one week. And I showed it to guys in, in, in Crypto Junkies community. And people were amazed about it. Although it did have a very weird uh, setup. It's Bollinger Bands. Uh, they were quite small, like maybe maybe something like this right here. When Major looked at it, he he, he said like, I don't know what to say. It's just the right bot with the right set of settings. It does its job quite well. And at that moment, it did. Um, I think it was an uptrend too. That kind of got, got got me 
a little bit more motivated to to go and try more and more and after a while i thought i, I found a few more patterns the second pattern i found was that this Bollinger's band uh, settings, it has an interesting thing. When you have deviation up higher and deviation down lower, it would literally buy and sell better at the moments when the prices of the coins would go up. And the other way around, well, obviously for, for the downtrend. And this is the moment when I realized that, okay, I think I know what downtrend and uptrend means because my bots are trading already quite well. Uh, well, better than they used to. They would give you like 5 6% like stably very easily for pretty much anything I would go for. In about 30 minutes, I was capable of doing that. Now now I'm capable of doing that in a few minutes, actually. This was interesting to play with for a while. Uh, and I kind of, I got myself some basic setups, like boiling gear bands, I would, I would go with 21, 1.5. I would, I, would, I would also always check like a set of numbers for every coin I was starting with which were 21, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, uh, 1. 1.5, 1, 1. 1.5, 2, and so forth, like, like these numbers, and see where the profits are better with a single coin. Uh, that would be the very first sort of thing I would do with the bot. And why would you do that? Right now, I'd say don't do that this way. I would just say uh, stick with some sort of uh, more or less a basic setting for boiling gear for the first few uh, back tests because it is an important indicator but what's more important is to set up rsi firstly sorry just to catch us up you start with us uh sorry you start with uh, rsi and then you jump up to bollinger bands right you start with uh tuning rsi in, and uh, you also give bollinger bands and macd some kind of basic settings there are some basic settings for them yeah yeah and, and then you would you would, you, would, you would start you would go with bollinger bands and then you would uh, fine-tune MACD. At the end, and, those settings are really often shared in the Discord community. Like I, I'm looking through the chat right now and people are always sharing their settings. So I think Keep I going. started Sorry. that trend. Yeah. Um, of sharing those settings. I think it was the first one who was sharing most of what he was doing because why the hell not? It's very yeah. easy to make and very easy to share. Let's actually, let's try and fine tune some setting, uh, some bot for, for the... Yeah. Now that example. we have a basic understanding. So just to go over that you're tuning rsi first with basic settings on macd and bollinger band then you're jumping up and fine tuning bollinger band and then finally we're tuning macd okay so just in case you guys just jumped on yeah maybe, that's that's, that's right um and i think that what we're seeing right now is it's kind of more or less uh finely tuned bot if you at least look at, at some prices uh, moments in the in the history and let me tell you that uh, a single setting does not guarantee the bots uh, to be trading perfectly well during the whole uptrend or downtrend or any kind of trend it is designed for. Usually bots have a tendency to stick to a certain type of uh, market conditions which do repeat themselves and bots would trade much better or would trade at all during those moments which for, 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 for this bot for instance, I mean it would it, it, it likes to sell, uh, to buy low and sort of sell somewhere on the first candle and and the second one oh highs uh it, it doesn't buy in the middle here right now with, with settings uh, it is got and what i want to do with when i see something like this a pattern like like this i would want it to buy here if it is possible uh and sometimes what you need to do is just press this one of these buttons here and you might oh, it's quite close we're buying here at least already, which is good. Reset middle is a good setting a button for, for adding signals where you don't kind of see them and there is no other way to add them. Let's see. Let's 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 take a look at this graph sort of from, from my current perspective, which is tuning the bot without doing much back testing, but just using this graph graph. This graph is quite useful in fact for tuning the bot. It shows you not just the signals, but it also shows you uh, indicators and their relationship to these settings. And let me show you how these settings uh, affect the indicators. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Well, not that far. Like this should be fine. Let, let's look at bo boiling gear bands first, as it is uh, one of the most important indicators to work with. And this indicator, what it does, it's uh, in, its, in its basic setup, it limits uh, trading to uh, what sort of falls within within its trading rules. And these trading rules are if the coin touches or, or, or moves through the Bollinger Bands up and down uh, lines, this is where the bot would, uh, the, the setting would give buy and sell signals. And it doesn't actually do it like when, when it has to pierce, it doesn't have to pierce. It, it has to be very close or, or come close to, to one of the uh, size. 
for the indicator to give a signal. And Mad Hatter is a bot that trades off three signals, right? Uh, three signals being uh, together, sort of agreeing together on a single trade. Can you see somebody typing messages or this is not, not visible to people? No, 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 this no, is good. Sorry, I'm just, I'm man in the chat and the Discord that we're getting kind of questions and people trying to get on um, onto the stream still, even though we're, uh -huh. we're already, but yeah, keep going, please. Okay, um, and this this uh, indicator is very strongly influenced by several parameters. One of which is its length. Its length, it it's what what sort of gives this this corridor uh, of up and down its shape and its momentum. It does have some sort of momentum uh, with it. And the second part is is the MA type we we, are, we, we have. Let's try like fifty uh, for length and see how this influences the. Uh, the corridor we're seeing, you see 50 and 12. With 12, this corridor is, well, obviously it's much more narrower and it with SMA uh, type, MA type, it's, it's got this this very junky, uh, very harsh, very, very, very sharp uh, move pattern. But if you give it like a hundred, for instance, for length, it's, oh, yeah. it's gonna smooth it out, yes. And uh, when this smoothing is happening, uh, it, it, it also sort of extends this move on every top uh, we're, we're getting sort of more to the right. I mean, when you have it at 20, you, you see you see, it doesn't actually like follow very smoothly forward. Uh, and this, this smoothness, it, it, it kind of allows you to, to pick, pick up more uh, highs when 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 you need those highs so basically yeah, you can pain, use that to 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 yeah to to give yourself more trading signals by giving it a higher length and at the same time playing with deviations deviations change with the length as well uh, and when the length is a hundred two is not always something you would want to use because you see we have very few signals uh, and not all of them are in the right places actually some of them are quite quite nicely tuned in the right places for a given moment here. When length expand, expands, you generally tend to change deviation to something smaller. The bigger the length, the smaller is the deviation for a better uh, trading style. But right, right with SMA, I think it doesn't work that, as well as it does with, let's try T3. Yeah, with T3. It does look quite weird right now, actually. It seems like it's not catching. Okay, hold on. And just while you're you're kind of playing around with that, Essentially, what he's doing here is you could literally come into this not even knowing what Bollinger Bands means, not even knowing what any of this means, like he did, like Cosmos did, <laughs> and he was just dialing in settings. Like, if I do this, like cause and effect. If I do this, what's the outcome? If I change this, what's the outcome? And you can literally just go through and backtest or simulation trade every single micro move. And you do enough of these, and yes, this does take time, but if you do enough of these, you would become pro at this in very quickly, uh, you know, very low amount of time, actually, a couple hours every day dedicating and you're taking notes on what changes you're making if you need to, otherwise keeping track of it in your mind. And before you know it, you would know quite a bit with this. And I think that's the most important thing that I really want to stress from the outside looking in throughout a video like this is, you know, we're not building rockets here. You don't need all this specialized skill. You don't need 50 books on RSI. You know, the, those books are so fucking painful to read. And most of the time they're filling you up with what? Information. Now, just because you have that information, it essentially tells you where the bullseye is when you learn more information. So it tells you what to look for, which automatically removes you from seeing so much of the picture because you have now what? A bias. So because I have this bias, I'm now missing so much of the picture because I'm, I'm already uh, essentially told what to focus on and where to look. And that's a good thing and not always a good thing. So, you know, this, you know, there's a way of learning inside out and outside in. And this is a very much inside out approach. You dive into the bot, you have no clue how any of this works and you start to micro tune these uh, settings, right? And you create a baseline for yourself, which he told you how he's done it and what his process is. So you could follow this and very much explore this for yourself. Or you could try the other way, which I think would be way more painful. And that would be learning from the outside in. So you would start learning MACD, RSI, Bollinger Bands from John Bollinger himself. You could pay him for coaching if you wanted oh, to. No. It's not Learn all of all. that and try yeah. and make your way into the depth of the software where we are now. I strongly uh, advise against that myself because I've attempted that on my crypto journey with several things. And it was an awful idea. 
It really was. And not only was I reading three, 400 page dry ass books that a lot of times I had to scratch my head and like, what did I just actually read? And so there's that approach and then there's very much a hands-on approach, which uh, I like. And, and, you know, Cosmos talked about last time, you know, when you're a kid and you're learning to walk, there's no book that you read on how to walk. When you learn to talk and you speak your first words, they just, what? They just come out. You just l- figure it out essentially. Um, there's no process that's really handed down to you unless it's genetic or subconscious, which we'll leave that alone in the, in the topic. My point is simply that, you know, you don't necessarily need to read uh, academic, dry academic books to get this stuff down. Yeah, that's right. And I, I would want to talk about that a little bit more. Um, you did, you, thank you for mentioning it. It's, it's a very important subject in terms of how I actually learned Manhattan. And the fact that you are, as a child, without any conscious mind, can learn a language so complicated that it takes years for a human with a fully developed mind to learn by 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 my mind, yeah, by by head. It does tell something about it, that, about about you, about your abilities, which don't go away when you get older. To be honest, I mean, if you are, you know, somebody who's who's in a foreigner country and the only way to survive is to quickly learn the language. To simply communicate, you will speak in in, in a few days. Uh, like the basics, you will just grasp them in a few days because you have this built within inside you, and this ability is something that works in the following manner: you are starting to gather experience, and you know you have no ideas what this thing is. Like for instance, Mad Hatter, but you don't know how it works, and you just play with it. And at some point, you realize that okay, you're seeing some patterns here. You're you're sort of getting some kind of essence from it, not by head, but by the experience. It's just, it just comes to you after a, a certain type, after a while, after some uh, kind of, uh, some amount of experience, I guess, some amount of repetitions, uh, because your your behavior does, begins to give you an outcome that's sort of more or less predictable. And you're like, okay, this is how this works. And if you go uh, with the approach of learning from somebody or from books, you are literally breaking the whole process down because learning is done within you know, yourself and you will just learn too many stuff that, that other people think and do. And it's not going to be able, you're not going to be able to apply it to bots because these indicators here, they are an emergent, all of the, of three of them. Matt Hatter bot is much, much more than, than they are separately. And they have some sort of hidden links within them, hidden uh, connections between different settings of different indicators which change something in the behavior of the bot, which is not something you are ever going to learn from books or from somebody who is using hand trading, for instance. It's the, 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 this, this stuff is never even going to come to their heads because it's just outside of the scope of what they've learned while learning to trade or learning the indicators as separate entities, you know? Okay. Yeah, really well said. Thanks for that. Let's continue. Let's continue with this thing. Um, and so, what were you playing around with when I was gabbing away? Uh, I I was just seeing what's where we are at right now and where the profits were. And I found that this this setting here, this DLT uh, coin, uh, it would profit you with twenty minutes graph quite well in a, not but not in 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 the last two days, but I think it was six days. No, I think I changed something, didn't I? Yeah, you're playing around with the MA type, which is just MA stands for moving averages, everybody. Moving averages here are very different to what you guess with Bollinger Bands in general. They are, but Bollinger doesn't have moving t- moving average types uh, as far as I have, have seen anywhere. So uh, this Bollinger, Bollinger Bands is a different indicator to what you get uh, anywhere else. This is a custom made indicator. It just has a name Bollinger Bands to make it more more simpler to understand really. Yet it doesn't work like 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 normal. You cannot recreate Matt Hatterbot strategy by doing a custom uh, trade bot, for instance. It doesn't work this way. Okay, let's let's move on with with what I was talking about. RSI uh, is in general what you find to what you tune to give your uh, bot a range of trading outside of of the parameters you put into RSI. And RSI is very easy to play with, and it's 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 the the most simple indicator and the, the most basic one you you will ever probably try and and tune. Uh, and it, it has some ranges. You you 
should probably you, you can you can find on the internet but the ones i use are very simple ones uh, for more trades uh, for short term trades i go with lengths of 3 up and down i would probably be within 21 or 31 range depending on what i want the the, the closer the up and down to each other are the more trades obviously we're going to get uh, the the, far, the further apart they are the, the less trades we're going to get and with this bot in particular we have rsi playing another important role and not, not, not a role we have uh, three different roles for rsi here it, it has three different approaches to, to to tuning it the first approach is we uh, we like scale the walls up and down so much that we literally get the most profits for a given time period like one day or, or, or six days usually it starts with one day you go for two days then for four days and for six days you max out on those then you go further on if you need to to create a long-term strategy but here we are just going to go with six days i guess and we we let uh lengths for three um and go 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 with the lowest we can while at the same time keeping the most profits 21 is too too little i guess so let's try 23 not much go 31 10 is fine um maybe there is more on 30 every time you test something you should just you know go two values up and two values down to see where the range sort of stops or or changes because this range is something you will be playing a lot with and the lower you go the better it is okay so at 26 with length three we have the lowest place for six days um the highest one let's try 82 for once okay now it says too much or maybe it's this one uh-huh 27 for lower for vitamin and 86 87 98 okay we, we went over the, the the border already and a few more back tests and our rsi is set for I don't know, I, I, let's give it a name. Let's 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 call it walling, um, or or yeah, let's let's give it. It's, it's walling, or just giving it walls from which nothing can reach the middle of RSI strip. And this this gives us uh, trading on on high high and highs and lows within RSI. Of course, we see a lot more trading signals right now. Uh, that's that's because RSI has a has a small length and it's got this this huge jumping up and down over here. But that's not really relevant for us it, within six days. Those signals, they just, they still work quite well. Uh, we can change it by giving RSI a bigger value and length and scaling up the walls with that as well. We can go as, as high as nine for this strategy. That would quite limit, quite strongly limit our sales and buy signals to a similar uh, range, I guess. And at the same time, it would limit the bot to be trading on, on, a, on a higher volatility part of the of the graph. Uh, it would It would skip something that's, that's less volatile as, as, you, as you see here. Uh, if we want more vol volatility, we have to scale scale those uh, up, uh, sell, buy and sell more to the center so we can catch the like every everything that's, that's low or below uh, 42. Oh, by the way, RSI is very easily tuned by using this slider over here. You can just try and catch the bottoms of what you think is good, like 38 here, for instance, and tops here. And just put these numbers into here without doing much box testing. It'll just work from the start. Usually yeah. it does. And if you're having troubles with finding profits uh, with RSI, there is another trick you can play with. It's just change length. Don't change up and down uh, or buy and sell. I like to call them up and down. Uh, just change lengths. Give it plus two or minus two and see how that plays out. Usually uh, RSI has this interesting property when you want to avoid a signal in a certain place for instance yes and you change lengths a bit and what you see is like like these signals they would change they sort of swap places uh, a little bit and at some point a signal you don't want will eventually be lower than the signal you want um, the second uh, way to play with to, to use uh, rsi is for precision you can uh, give it lengths of 20 or 21 and here, uh, you, you can see it's like, it's like a lot less volatile, it's a lot narrower. And what you do is you try and catch the bottoms and the tops with a setting like that. And I'm not, I'm not sure if this, this is going to work well for this coin right now, to be honest, but still. And this would give you a lot more, uh, a lot less signals, but at the at more at more correct places in your in your graph. So our buy is not very, yeah, I see. We're nearly nailing the bottoms, by the way. Let's see. If we can catch this bottom over here, because something that we really need. And if we're incapable of doing it, within a few more changes, we change our length a bit. Well, we have a signal here, which we don't need. Um, so yeah, length is definitely for a change. And this this signal, it came with, the longer the length, the closer to the center would be our 
signals, but not always. You see, I've changed lengths, and now this this is actually getting even, even lower than it was on the previous result, like, like here, yeah? But if I give it a few more bumps, it would eventually sort of go away. Yeah, you see, it went away. Uh, and now we're, we're left with those signals we would want if we were trading before 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 this high uh, expectation before expecting this high then we would that is how I, I used to do it before then i would i would tune the sell signals sell level i'll bring it down to catch a few uh, tops because the more you catch at the top when it's down training the better obviously and it's also good when it's up training but as i said it's not going to work quite well here although yeah um, let's see how much that would give us in back testing well, for six days, it gives us 5%. And where is six days? 18th, 19th, 20, 21. Not very, not very good. So I would just stick with three for, for that thingy here. And we're already getting 14% for four days and 12% for six days. That means that somewhere along this graph, uh, we had a loss. Yeah, we did have a loss. And this is something we would want to, to obviously avoid somehow, right? And it can be done. It can be done by playing with... Uh, MACD and Bollinger Bands as well. As as, as we've left RSI, now we're not going to touch it anymore. We're going to play with MACD first, I guess, or no, we're going to play with Bollinger Bands and then MACD to try and avoid a loss at our six-day period of backtesting. Now, the other easy way to make the bot more profitable is just change the interval. Sometimes it just works better on other intervals, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to play with Bollinger Bands and we're going to start with our length. And why length? Because if you have deviation up and down as a something basic like one or two, you can you can find an interesting pattern for this indicator, which is profits tend to repeat themselves along the, the length of this band. Uh, and you might get some profits. Let's see, let's let's see where, where, it, where it gives us our profits here. By the way, for for the sake of of, of it, I'm going to get my 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 my, my self-made script to just do back testing for six days automatically, so I can just concentrate on the the changes in the settings. It's I'll if you I'll probably give you the script after we do the uh, view uh, this this live session. Yeah, okay. Is sure. it doing it? Are we seeing any back testing? Yep, we're seeing back testing happening. And what we do is, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. And what we do is, we just add one to lengths of Bollinger bands. And with, as you see, this the back testing results they sort of change every now and then. Every time I add something, they would give you a higher or lower profits. Or in our case, this is a loss. And the loss here is likely due to very narrow uh, up and down for such short lengths for the DMA, um, MA type. As you see, it's very tight um, and it does give you a lot of signals. But it's, it's getting smaller and this is a good indication for going forward with changing the length. Because the more you change, the, mo the more the profits sort of will come up. Every With, with every change, there will be something closer to, the, to those profits. And if you go further higher or uh, go go up more, you will see other places where profits also originate. They, they will have this kind of ladder pattern to them so that you move up and the profits became, become more and more with every move until they sort of hit their top, then they start, start to go down. Yeah, so you'll kind of see in the settings that you're, you're maxing out, you're hitting the ceiling. <clears throat> yeah, okay. We had something like, like 9%. Nine, 9%. Um, somewhere around 41, yeah. And this is something where you, where you can not take a note for yourself. Here you can increase those settings by playing with deviation up and down quite easily. And you can go further on and find the same... Well, you see it's going down right now. And I, I usually change tend to change deviation. Okay, we've got at 51 something, that's 12% already. Uh, and this is 12 and 51 because deviation up and down one here fits quite well to the graph. Um, if you increase it, I guess it's going to give you less trade signals and less profit. I mean, deviations. Um, and the, the the higher you go, the more changes you're going to see. And at some point, maybe around 70 or 60, there, there's going to be another point of profit, which is also good to take a note. Uh, because the longer you go, the more stable sort of this strategy will become. But you, don't, you, you should not go very, very long with, TV, with, your, with Bollinger Bank's length. Because I think it's called overfitting um, the indicator. Yeah. And you see what happened right now? Uh, straight signals, they changed uh, their like places where, 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 and now the profits they just don't look too well. Um, we have very 
Okay, it it changed the whole graph view. By the way, I think this this Dima thing doesn't work well after a certain you know, lengths for for it. Let's try and change the deviation to something else. Uh, I may type to something else and see how that would work. And start with the beginning, I guess, it's 10. Or no, let me let me show you an interesting one. Um, there is one called MAMA, Mama. Uh, and this one is, it's it's a weird one with length and up until 10. We can go with for four or five uh, with it and uh, give it up and down like two or even three or even four, which is something you don't see very often, to be honest. But it will do you surprisingly well at some point with a, such a such a small and and wide setting. Let's see if it does it here. Yeah, that's really interesting settings. Uh huh. And uh, my uh, Steam bot, which did uh, 65 or 67 percent last uptrend, it was based on these settings. It was like 511 for uh, for MA type mama. And it just did very well. Interesting. I do, everyone should should not take a note uh, that deviations up and down when you play with them by hand. Uh, if you are not fast enough, what happens is this value will always change to 0 0.0001. And it's quite annoying, to be honest. It hasn't been uh, fixed yet. And I hope that it will be at some point in the future. And the way to, if you if you don't have an, an fast enough uh, hands to, to type correct numbers like you know like 1.4 and you're and you may not be on time and it will change to 0, 0 0.1 you can just type 1.4 and press left and type a, a dot or a comma between them that's easier for at some point and now we're getting somewhere already you see uh we are getting some profit by just yeah, changing up and down uh-huh on five and somehow it's it is more or less stable when you when you catch those profits you can go with 2.5 for instance too every ma type by the way has a certain like like a, a limit for for its range of up deviation up and down for uh mama it's uh i think un until you go uh to 10 you can you can go as high as you know six and six and nine probably even no we're not getting any trade signals or three and four and yeah we're getting some trade signals but three and four is way too much I mean, for 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 this indicator, uh, for any indicator, I don't really don't normally see those. And after sorry, MA types, I don't normally see those going this high. But after you go uh, over ten, uh, nothing over two point nine is gonna gonna do you any good, or maybe three point one uh, for for MAMA. SMA type, uh, SMA MA type will play well up until two point three, and it will not play well after that if play at all. I mean, sorry, this is the wrong one. Um, 2.9 and we're still oh, we're still getting some indicators okay interesting with 21 it does have this feature i tend to go with uh with for some bots with very short lengths for bollinger bands like the one i showed you for a mama type and for other types i go with just the basic settings you can you can find online which are 21 uh 40 50 sometimes 12 8 uh and just plus minus two or three from these numbers is what you are gonna you know definitely get some something something closer to to good profits with with this indicator and i like it because it's quite predictable with deviation up and down you also have a few patterns which are uh if for instance up and down has a difference of like like right now like it's it's, it's, a, it's a straight number probably 100 percent yes one and two or or maybe just just one basically you will have uh the same uh, corridor between it in, in the per percentage sort of view when you change lengths. So if, if, you, if you change lengths to uh, 20, your deviation up and down has to change by some number, right? Uh, to keep the same sort of uh, range of prices. With here, you just, no, I, th I think it does, does change much on, on this coin right here, right now, right, to be honest, because the profits went down. I, I'm guessing it, it narrowed, yeah, it narrowed. It should probably be ex expanded by a bit. And this expansion number should be just, I guess, something like that. It's, it's, it, 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 you should try and keep the same sort of range when you change the deviation, but I'm saying that it's not really working well while I'm saying it. <laughs> and, but just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find this pattern yourself, I guess. Or you just change the length a bit. Uh, it does change the behavior of the of the bot quite quite dramatically. Sometimes you're just well, you, what you are. You're just like one length away from better profits, and it's always good to 
play around with it just a little bit before you launch the bot or while you are running it live. And if you want to you wanna fine tune the bot, you can just make a copy and fine tune the copy and then just apply those settings to your current bot. And what is better, 11%? And sometimes it's good to just, you know, every now and then once you've done You've done like MACD or you've done uh, deviation up and down. It's good to go through the basic uh, links for for it to see maybe other ranges have a better profit with a given deviation up and down. And if you do catch something, uh, play with with going up and down from that place. Like, like I said before, by two or three. Um, this 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 always gives you one if you're not fast enough. You will also always get one. By the way, when you are trying to fine tune something like Bitcoin uh, or Ethereum, you are going to get, it's going to get very complicated real fast. It's just, it's just not going to work like it normally does with other coins. Why is that? Uh, I don't know, but it begins to do it well once you uh, give the length of Bollinger Banks a higher, higher number, something around 70 or 120. All of a sudden, start, starting, from, starting from 60 or 50, you are getting profits. You're getting profits on those coins, on, on the master coins or, or the main coins. I don't know how you call those coins. So those are, those are high lengths for boring events, and you're going to make profits there. For anything else, well, it depends on, 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 on the coin. And you can actually, at least the, the theory, like my current theory states that if you are seeing a given pattern on a coin, like... Like, like 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 a draw, like a pattern like this one for instance and you have made a setting for it in the past for something similar you can apply it to this uh, period and it will work as well as it did work on another coin you had but I'm not sure if that's like the case right now I'm seeing it happening uh, I've I've noticed that I have a few settings for a pump coin which just work on pump coins basically you you copy it to a, a coin you're expecting to pump it will work. And this is due to RSI, I think, and its length. RSI has a, has a property uh, limiting a trading range to something uh, it sort of goes through. What happened right now is uh, the number, the value for RSI got uh, type, so saved by the bot wrongly. I think it just saved one. It didn't, didn't catch my number five, which I've put into it. And uh, if like length 15, as you see, the uh, trading range became narrower. And uh, the coin will be getting outside of it once uh, it sort of the price goes down, and it will likely stay below it if there is a, a very very strong dump, or it will stay above this range if there is a pump. Like when the price is going up, the range is just going to go up off, and we're going to have only sell signals, sell 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 signals. If there is a dump, we'll, we're going to have only buy signals, and that's not a good thing for a bot to have sell signals on an uptrend and buy signals on a downtrend. So RSI is something that gives shape to our trading. And if we want a, a trading on, on an, an uptrending coin, for instance, or a period of uptrend, we need to fine tune for an uptrend period for this coin, basically, or just apply a, a basic setting for it. An uptrend is normally, generally something that has a lower buy level, a higher buy level and higher sell level. With a constant uptrend, usually, I find that uh, buy is somewhere around 40, 45, maybe even 51, and sell is somewhere around 89 and 99 or 95, Which depending on the volatility sense. of that coin. Yeah, and what you do is you, you basically just give it like settings like that, uh, which would limit the range for this coin for an uptrend or for a downtrend and run it with a safety stop loss. I mean, with a stop loss because you need stop losses in order not to keep on selling and buying when you don't need to. Uh, when the coin is dumping after a good pump, a stop loss of 1% for a good, for, for a finely tuned bot would just, you know, give you an ability to exit trading with 1% loss after like a 35 or 27% gain, which is something I had recently uh, with IOTX coin. Okay, I'm going to stop this back testing right now because I think... Um, well, have you done MACD? Kind of, I have done it, yeah. MACD okay. has... Uh, uh, it's a setting that affects uh, the quality of signals, basically. And for me, it's got several different ranges which kind of work for different coins. Uh, and what, 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 what the way I use it is I want to, you know, diminish all the signals which are there, but they, they just don't need to be there. 
clean up the graph from them. This is what I use for it. And when, when fast and slow are tuned nicely, I'll talk about that a bit later, MACD signal is what will clean everything off or up for you. The, more, the longer it is, the less signals you will see on the graph. And it's not always uh, doing it in, in the correct manner, to be, to be honest. So uh, it's something you have to play a bit with. But those numbers, they're, they're, they're all so predictable. They're all so obvious. And you will just have to basically switch between them. There aren't many of them. There are fast and slow uh, are a simple rule for it for them. You have fast. Uh, you have uh, like, like it's like 10, 20 or 20, 40, 60, 80. And slow is two times fast or three times fast or four times fast. And we don't, don't normally go over the range of 120 for slow. Uh, so, you know, calculate from that. Uh, we have 20 and 40 as an, an option with a signal two for, for, for a basic setup. And if it does look good, well, you see, we got just more, we, we managed to make, to make more signals right now. We don't want signals at, at the first parts of the uh, dump we're, we're experiencing right now. So what we do is we change a signal to something bigger. Usually 12 <coughs> is already interesting, but it will also remove by signals in other places. Although if you're in downtrend, this is something you really want to do. You want to you wanna avoid buying. And this combination of RSI actually and MACD is what you need to play with. RSI length and the corridor we're, we're talking about is the way to go. And MACD signal is what will clear up the graph for you to the maximum extent that possible from unwanted signals. Uh, and in some cases, I'm actually getting good results, sorry, <coughs> on something as high as 31 for, for, for uh, signal. But the initial uh, setup is usually different. We have some coins working well with 20, 120, and 21. <clears throat> so I think I'm getting something with my voice happening. Hold on, I'm, I'm going to get a drink. Sure. Okay. So um, any questions so far with what he's covered, go ahead and drop them in the chat. You see today's pretty easy going. Um, he's been talking for quite a while, so I'll take over here for a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, maybe we, like I've got some ideas about doing some really, really long, long um, streams and just do like trade challenge streams. Um, and we get some people in the community all on this end botting together and uh, sharing screens, but we'll see. So um, just real quick, there's somebody that asked earlier before I forget, and it's a little bit out of place. So excuse me on this, but uh, Cosmos, do you have an order that you could give a process order for people to kind of run with or, or maybe just what you use so that they can use that as a baseline to create their own process flow? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, actually, I've given it a couple of times already to people. That's what One we were talking them. about, right? Is this the question? Yeah. Like, make sure with whoever asked it, if you could clarify, we talked about setting um, RSI and then Bollinger Bands and then MACD, right? So everything else, if we're not tuning that specific indicator, everything else would just have the base settings. Or if we already finished that, then that would have our finished settings already. That's what we've talked about. Does that help yeah. clarify the question um, that was dropped in the chat. If so, great. If yeah, not, okay. Um, let's um, give a quick example. Let's create a new scalper bot and just just give it basic settings and see how the graph will look. All right. Oh, not, not scalper, yeah. Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. Yeah. Just, I was gonna correct you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just choose some random pair. It's not really important what it is. I'll give it a name and add it. <clears throat> Which I'm glad you spent so much time like just talking through I the setting. I haven't finished yet, to be honest. There is so much more to say, but most of the stuff I think I've, I've said already. Yeah, so we'll cover, <laughs> we'll cover everything. And now we're doing, I, I think you've covered everything is what I'm saying. Now you're doing a live setup right now. Maybe we play around. I pull up the screener and we use that and I give out the settings, you even though that, yeah. Yeah. on that. And then maybe we'll just wrap up with um, you thinking if there's anything else you want to add. No big deal. There is. There, there's always, there always is. Okay, yeah. uh, there, there we are. There's our basic coin. And normally you always switch everything off. Uh, I mean, all, all the... And you look at the coin and it's complicated to look at, especially this one by some reason. It's got this weird bullying gear, but I guess it's because it's low trading uh, coin. I want to change it to something that's, that's better. That's got more volume. Because when you see something like this, it just looks ugly and it's not enjoyable to do. 
Yeah. Oh, data. I've done data, but let's just do data. What happened? Data is not active. What does that mean? Price or is not active. All right. BTC. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, go with something different with some more volume. Right now, by the way, if you're on the stream, we just saw 1% drop in BTC as we're talking. So it's gone down about 100 bucks. Nice. 40 bucks, actually. Awesome. We've got BTS for a, a, yeah. an example comment. And with what's what's usually said, what Matt Hedder is said for it's producing no signals at all right now. Why is that? Why is it not showing any signals? We have a few piercings of Bollinger Bands up and down, but we're not having any signals. Why is that? Because we don't have a signal consensus mode. Yes, that's true. And also because our RSI is way out of range. It's got uh, length 14 and it's got very narrow trading in the middle happening, um, which does tell a few things about this coin, by the way, um, which you should know yourself. I'm not going to speak about them, but it is an indi indication of some sort um, for a for this given coin. And I think I think what well, the first thing you do is you go for RSI and start low, start low, just just to get the essence of this coin, go three or four <coughs> or five or six. And you will already begin to see some trading signals emerging over here. And I'm going to give it a little higher value just to see how that would look. And give it a lower one as well. Give it two and see how, do, how that would look. We want to buy here, uh, here, if possible, sell here, sell here, have a sell signal here. And it seems like this, this, this uh, coin is sort of more or less stable and it's been going in a downtrend, um, which can probably be seen by RSI if we increase its length. Mm, yeah, I guess it can be, but we don't need that. So how do we do that? Uh, we set the basic settings, which are, well, MACD, we, we just go with 2040, or uh, I will give you a table of those settings, uh, or, or an, any other setting from this uh, table. and. We are seeing a change in uh, trading signals. We're having sales sort of at the peaks already, and we have a few buy signals which sort of go to the to, to the lows. We don't have anything here, which is fine for now. We are analyzing what we're already seeing. Yeah, we have a lower buy, higher sell, which is actually quite good already in in, in terms of things. But we don't have uh, we have this this buy signal here which we don't want uh, because the next sell is. Actually, it's higher than, than the buy, so it should be fine. We are fine-tuning for downtrend for this coin in particular. The good thing now is we can we can just change the uh, interval mode and, and see what we are dealing with in a bigger scale. It was quite complicated to do in the past. I've got a 4K monitor here, and uh, that's that's where I normally put my uh, mat hatters on. Or uh, with with MacBook Retina display, you can just zoom out as far as far as like this, uh, fifty percent or even even more, and you are capable of getting uh, up to six, I think, days of trading history in a single graph. But it just looks so tiny and so uncomfortable to play with that I don't normally do that. And you will, if you have a simple monitor, that's just out of out of options for you. Maximum you can go is probably minus uh, sixty percent of the zoom. Uh, and so you're stuck with this screen, uh, which you, when you move and change a setting, what happens is you go back to the front and this makes it not very comfortable to tune the bot with this kind of view, you know, because you have to move too much to see where the trade signals are placed in the past. So forget about that. Go into this view here and back test. Start with one day, but give it some coin, of course, and see what it would do you in one day. I uh, see what it does in two, four, and six, and try and squeeze the maximum out of it with tuning Bollinger bands. The way you do it, you just go with one and one for the first test. You see, you're not getting any any good results, but you know it's a downtrend, so um, you start playing with deviation down a bit more than the deviation up, and you give it a value of two. And something happening. Something is happening. Okay, we're having a bit more loss in this case. I would normally go for length uh, whilst leaving this up, up and down for, for the same, and I'd go for lower lengths. Lower lengths uh, also provides more trading signals and more trade opportunities for the bot to, to try itself on, and maybe that would be good. But it's not, it's not, not, not being very good. Um, what I'm seeing right now is that 
it's not working as, as I'm expecting it. What it means is that I forgot my RSI. I didn't do my RSI. That's why I'm getting wrong uh, results right now. And my RSI has to be tuned a little bit better. It's a downtrend. We're not, we're not forgetting that, right? On the downtrend, we have lower buys and lower sales. So sell of 80, even with length two, is probably something not good for us. We'll change it to 51 for the sake of it and see how that will influence the bot. Didn't change much. I'll give it four uh, for length and try six days. We're having um, a better result on four days, but the worst one on six days. What about our first and second day? On the first, we've got nothing. On the second, we've got a little bit. Okay, um, let's give it by uh, a bit higher. Let's give it 31. 31 is an interesting uh, range to go with, by the way. And in increase the cell to 61. Why, why is it 61 or 41 or 31 all the time? Because somehow it's just better than 60 uh, or 59 for the initial setup I'm, I'm doing right now. I always change the length, it, it helps sometimes. Uh, and when this is not working as you expect, you go for another indicator's length and see how that would influence the bot's behavior. Okay, getting something better already. And when you do this row setup, you literally just, just you know, jump like four or five each time. And when you don't, once you're not getting anything better, you also change another value to something closer to a, a typical setting and go from there. Oh, you see, something is getting better. Maybe even up to 2.5, that might help us too. Yeah, uh, for six days, we're having a small loss now. Let's see what we've got for four. Oh, in two days, we have a little bit of profit, but one day is nothing. Let's, let's give this something smaller for deviation up and see how that would change the bot behavior. Well, it did change a bit. Um, let's go with links, change. First two days, nothing. Why is that? Um, I'm guessing the trading is not happening because deviation up is very small. It's too small for a given length. So let's, let's, let's try and give it something like 5, 0 0.5 and see how that behavior influences behavior. Well, definitely catching more prices, but still not any, any profit, no profit at all. Skew 0.9. This, this uh, deviation up and down, they have settings like 0 0.9 and 1.1, for instance. Somehow that works for some coins, better for some coins for us. Uh, it's got the opposite. Oh. Um, doing well sometimes. But not in our case, of course. Maybe we can, uh, we need a value within and under one, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 might be something interesting. Nope, not getting there. What about 2.5 for both? Oh, damn. Okay. So higher uh, deviation, it does produce less signals, um, trade signals, but we've got something within six days. Nothing with, with the last two days though, which is probably fine um, for the given downtrend, which is actually quite good because it didn't trade much. What was, okay, longer length gave us a bit more profit. We've changed RSI again and seeing there a little more, um, let's give it six. Uh, that's not getting us more. Um, so yeah, this is basically the, the basic uh, thing with, with Mad Hatter. If something isn't working, then just change something else and change it within a given list of values. Like 2.5 for SMA seems to work. What about 2.3? Um, oh, wow. You see, we, we're, we're catching something in six days already. Yeah better than it was before. And how, how much time have we spent? Uh, 10 minutes maybe, 15 minutes yeah. for that? Well, me talking. Um, Closer to 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, if you see a trend sort of getting better at 
in 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 the direct direction like here for instance uh bollinger band's length is a trend um like the higher it is for some period of time the better the profits are then you you you'd explore that pathway a little bit um sometimes you know but but uh, bot tuning can become like a very interesting exploration uh, process that might take you hours and hours of just playing with different settings and seeing how those uh, change the bot's behavior because every time you do that, and if you and, and you go to the analyzer view, oh, sorry, uh, you will see a different trading pattern, and that trading pattern is an emergent of those settings over here. And, and for me, it's quite fascinating to try and make this bot uh, trade the best to the best of its abilities. Oh, which sorry. let me let me kind of chime in there. You know, you you might find yourself um, spending time and going so deep into the rabbit hole, and you know, falling through uh, different time intervals and settings, and getting lost over here and lost over there. Understand that no matter what, you're still moving forward. And that being said, kind of, um, I guess, a disclaimer is: if you're sitting here watching this, like, what the fuck? This is boring. Then this is something you should not be doing at all. Um, to try and have fun with this in some sort of way to try and really challenge yourself to get the, the best possible amount of ROI out of this bot, removing the whole money component from your mind and just looking at this black and white as, as something that uh, you like for the challenge or you think is in some sort of way fun. Probably the people that feel that way will have the best success. And the people that are thinking, oh yes, bot equals money, probably aren't going to stick around because you got to understand something, some of the basics of learning and doing something new is that it's got to be fun for you. Right. And I see a lot of people looking to bots as a means to make money and that understand that might not necessarily lead to the result that you want. I just, I figured I'd insert that now. Um, maybe I'll mumble about it more here uh, before we, we wrap up, but yeah, this should be something that gives you some sort of stimulus essentially. Um, and if it's not, and if this is dry and caustic and boring, then uh, you do not want to be doing this. Don't go, go do something else. There's so many other ways to make money in crypto, you know, but anyways, I just figured I'd add that in. Yeah, that's a very good add in actually. Um, and it's a very correct one. Crypto for me, at least it's not about money. It's about just, just the, the joy or the pleasure of, doing it it's it's quite a lot of fun uh, for me at it's least maybe yeah. yeah i really love the process it's it's like a meditation which you can go into so deeply that the next day will come on and it will go away and you will still be deep there and try and figure something out like um there was a there, there is still going on a time where i would literally just uh change ma type and you know find its its limitations on uh, on different lengths that, uh, for uh, for it and uh, deviation up and down too, uh, and it would take me like a day for 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 a few MA types and for different coins. Yeah, and it would be an enjoyable day. Uh, and yeah, after I that, I will have those settings uh, so deeply stuck inside my head that I will literally sometimes look at the coins and I know what kind of settings would be good for this trading pattern right yeah. away because i've done them so many times and that can't be given that's got to be learned through doing and to get zen for a second i mean we could argue that everything um everything in life is just it's the process right so fall in love with the process no matter what you're doing so you know people in in buddhist culture that farm they do uh, agriculture right so all day long they're in the fields you know here in asia uh, rice is really common rice fields. Right. And so those people are in the fields all day long and they love it. They don't necessarily love rice or eating rice or growing rice. They love the process. And it's such a meditative process for them now, um, that all day long, it just passes by before they know it. And they're such, you know, there's so much joy in what they're doing and this is no different. So regardless of what thing you're looking to get into, right. Um, and put your energy and focus into, I, I really don't think that matters um, as long as you understand the fundamentals of like, I should be doing this for the process itself, for the enjoyment of the process, learning, getting better, challenging, 
whatever. Those should be the L the variables that you're looking at versus um, I want to do this because I think this thing leads to the result of money. Because oftentimes we all know this already. I'm just I'm restating the obvious that we all forget is that when you go at something trying to make money, a lot of times you get a subpar result. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And there is, I think it's it's more like a rule. If you want something real hard, you're not going to get it anyway. Um, and it does sort of apply to money too. And um, anything, any failure with such an mindset is just going to ruin your your emotions so badly and going to put you into a depression. You know, um, it's it's not that important. This money, I've I've lost quite some money on uh, my first trading. Um, the first trading I've done was literally get into a bag, get get the bag, uh, the, lose it 50%, sell it off in, in hopes of getting more money by trading without even knowing what I was doing. F get, finding another coin you think is good, uh, investing into it and having the same happening to it, a bag which would lose another 50%. And in the end, I was stuck with like 30% of what I initially had. And I didn't feel a dime of obsession about it. I thought that maybe it's not a good idea to trade by hand. I should try and find some kind of bot. And I went on, onto some forum, um, and that that forum had an explanation for the three bots that were out there on the market right by, by then. And Hass Online did just appeal to me as the most complicated one, and I loved, you know, constructors uh, and complicated stuff to play with since I was a child. And a bot is just another constructor which is complicated in a way because it uses a lot of numbers but that's not something that is complicated as 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 essence you know it's it's something that's designed to to do what it is designed to do for in in our case it's trading given a strategy which i never had to be honest and the first couple of um weeks when i when i got the bot they were just horrible i couldn't make any profits on anything and it was just quite upsetting for me until the math hatter came out and math hatter was something uh, uh as, as a strategy i have learned on crypto junkies discord uh, at the same time i was trying to, to to tune the bots with custom indicators and you know math hatter bot just worked because it was the all, all of these settings in there are some settings you can fine tune if you do it for a night and you don't sort of repeat yourself often you will finally at the end you'll just get somewhere and that somewhere is going to lead you somewhere else I mean, which in my case was um, more attention from the team because i was somehow ma making nice settings for it yeah <clears throat> all right um to be honest, I'm quite tired of this coin. And when when something doesn't work as it, as it expect expected, I normally switch to some to some other coin. And right now, I think I've said most of the stuff I wanted to say about uh, the bot and the basic uh, of how to tune it. Unfortunately, uh, with this this coin, I couldn't show a proper uh, tuning. But I think that's not very important. Uh, as we will do something else, and I'll. I'll I'll show it, show the results maybe later to, like later on or, or during another. Oh yeah. We're going to do another, another coin with you with the screener right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So um, yeah, let's, let's just pick one really coin. quick and, uh, and let's kind of go through it. Uh, you don't have to get as detailed, but maybe we play around with it a little bit. So the screener settings are shared and shown in a video. Okay. On the channel. And they're very simple. Okay, I think there's five settings all together and there's screenshots of this in the Discord. There's uh, there's the settings shared. There's so much given. It's like you cannot screw this up, okay? And just um, real quick, somebody asked, hey, can you show, can you disclose some of the results that you've gotten? Uh, Cosmo shares most of his settings and in the settings, it shows um, the percentage, like up in the top <laughs> right-hand corner, it will return on investment. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not even going to ask him honestly to, to disclose, you know, if you well, like what you're hearing, it encourages you to use the bot, then use it. And if not, and you don't like it, then, you know, I guess don't use it. Um, I'm moving away myself personally from using that as like some sort of selling point uh, because it really is obnoxious for all of us to get so obsessed over how much money can we make? How much money can we make? 
um, that should be like the, the third level, fourth level uh, of the conversation. You know what I mean? So anyways, don't, I, I hope you don't take that offensively because I didn't mean it that way, but um, yeah, I just, I don't think that's where our focus should be. So anyways, back to the Mad Hatter. I've got the, uh, I've got the screener pulled up, which fun fact, if you're using, uh, if you're using trading view, then do, 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 use uh, Opera, use Safari. Um, they tend, those browsers tend to run better also too, for Binance, when you have your exchange accounts opened up and you're like, cause in Chrome, uh, one thing I noticed is that it bogs down really, really quickly and it's really a Ram resource hog. So, um, don't use Chrome for all your stuff. Uh, opera works way better. So anyways, I got opera open and I'm on the 15 minute. I literally have the stock mad hatter settings, which is in a screenshot that you can look at right now and follow along in the uh in the discord and so what i'm looking at is 88 matches and so i'm just going to quickly kind of zoom through these and see if let me also get my time frame on the 15 minute actually do you want to flick me over uh screen share and i'll just uh share my screen um how do i do that oh uh, we've never done this okay 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 hold on um let me see if i can oh yeah yeah no, I can. Okay. I got it. Okay. Wait, wait, which one am I on? I'm on that one. Yeah. Okay. So I put it right smack dab in the middle. Can everyone see that? Right. Cause I'm now hiding the chat and hiding the, all the YouTube stuff. Just a quick yes. Can we see? Well, I'm seeing you. Okay, you're seeing. Okay, that's mostly what I was asking. All right, so let's just make this easy. Uh, talking all uh, around in circles. Here's the settings. I'll save it. I'll leave it up here for a second. Five settings. Bollinger Band settings. MACD. Um, and then I'm using stochastic RSI here. Have it set to fast. Boom, that's it. Okay. And then what it's returned me is I'm on a 15 minute. It's returned me 87 results. Um, which the results right now will be very interesting because we have um, we have BTC correcting a little bit. So what you can do to make this even better is just come over here to my favorites. What? What? Oh, because I got all this fractal stuff on here. Um, let me just shut off some of this. Turn on Bollinger Bands. Yeah, let's just turn on Bollinger Bands. So for example, let's just There we go. So this is, you know, this coin here is sliding. So you'll you'll hear us, and I'm going to give you some terminology because I want you guys to be able to follow along just as we quickly do this. But um, in the voice channel in the boiler room, you'll often hear us say, "Oh, it's sliding on the 15 minute." This is what we mean by sliding. It's literally sliding down the bottom of the Bollinger Band, and it's expanding out. So with Bollinger Bands, it's very simple: is that when it and when it bulges, then it will eventually shrink or squeeze. So a squeeze means that there's a bulge coming and um, vice versa, right? So anyways, so this is a bad choice. I'm just going to quickly go through these and see if we can't get, get, a decent, uh, get a decent setup here. No. And so what you can do is it's given you these results. It's given you these uh, quote unquote setups. And what you can do is you can have all your indicators on here. So your RSI, your MACD, and you can just confirm. And what you'd confirm off of is the video training or if you didn't really care and you wanted to go the other way, which is what we talked about in the beginning of this live stream, is um, do you want to just grab one of these, even though some of these are technically sliding? Let's grab nope. this one. No. ARNBT. You like that one? No, not really. I, I, I like those. Um, recently, I was quite good with coins that sort of that, that have this curved uh, pattern to them when, when they go from. Uh, downtrend to something like a small flat trend and then they go uptrending those i like um, those tend to be very easy to to work with and um, they i have a basic setting for them basically and downtrend i don't like because they send they, they tend to uh, to require more control over over the bot because when you find yeah. for, for a downtrend it will not work well on uptrend basically and you will lose at the moment of reversal if it happens while you're asleep yeah so maybe that was uh sorry i was just grabbing a coffee maybe that was uh like we probably picked the ultimate worst time because btc btc is correcting up a bit so alts will immediately 
market with low market cap, this we see, look, all of them are sliding. So that might've been a bad choice um, to pick that. Let me give you back host here and um, um, let's just carry on. Carry on. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check the way I normally do it, actually go through Binance. But right now, yeah, we only have like, oh, this is USDT. We've got. Well, can you, uh, can you start? Can you start? Um, can you share your screen oh, still? My screen, share screen. Right, okay. Um, Otherwise, we might have just goofed up. I'm newer to using Zoom, guys, so I apologize. But um, I do know that. Uh, okay. Yeah, you need to give me the host back. If I give you host, will it cancel the stream? Uh, nope. Yeah, I don't think it will. Okay, let me try it. We'll give it a shot here, guys. Okay. Yeah, we're good. And I can okay. give you and me permission to do screen sharing as well. Okay, we're both screen sharing now. This will okay. uh, no. this will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? It says I said okay. Yeah, pop yours back up. I stop mine. Sorry guys, I didn't realize that that would affect so quickly uh, on the fifteen minute, but I should have known. Yeah. Okay. We're, uh, we're sort of bouncing on BTC. After about 2% drop. Bouncing on BTC, all right. So I got my Binance open. Okay, great. And EDO seems to be a nice coin actually to, to try. The one, the one that's open right now. I see. EDO. Okay. I see what you meant by that curve. Okay, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, those are quite quite nice. Um, Thanks guys for linking in. In the live chat, by the way, they popped up links if you want to watch those videos. Let's carry on though, yeah. Yep. Let's see. Oh, I actually got some settings for video. And let's see what they show us. The setting is designed uh, to, to basically buy on the reversal uh, of the coin. It would and uh, sell after the the the, the uh, sell uh, level of RSI is sort of reached. Um, it will. It, it's not designed uh, on past trading data, so it's like it's like a setting for for future, and it's just just you know for for, for a given expectation, uh, which can actually be even further in, in improved, as far as I remember. And what we want with this uh, setting is. Uh, uh, a sell after the the top has been reached, not at, at during during the slide up uh, or the first like first candle, which sort of closes with with uh, uh, price price going lower. We wanted to sell around the third or fourth candle, where the uh, where the where, where where the high is on on uh, well on, on five minutes graph. Obviously, this this one has, has got thirty minutes graph. Let's see, how, let's see how this looks on the 15th. Okay. And I think that this coin is not going to go up too much. I think it's going to go about this, this here maybe, like one, one six, seven or, or one, one seven maybe. Because usually they go to the half of the previous high, which, which is this one right here. Uh, and if it does. Why, why I think it's not gonna go? Because usually when you, when they do the RSI is much uh, much much narrower uh, to, at the at the cell uh, at the top um, part here, and it would normally pierce it a few times. Um, I think it's called convergence divergence when when the price is uh, going down and RSI would just just pierce it and sort of slide down a little bit and pierce it again. Uh, this is like classical pattern. So this coin. Uh, I'll probably just just give it the setting uh, it, it, right here right now. It will sell at, at the first top. It will buy somewhere in the middle with this setting, and it will sell at the second top if the second top ever happens. And the stop loss will literally close this whole thing when the price begins to go down a lot. And stop loss here should probably be one percent, I guess. I don't see any reason for it to be any bigger. Like even here, we are having oh, a coin going up. What's the biggest 
down on uh, 0.4%. Yeah, we can make it even smaller, I guess, uh, for the stop loss to take a small, even a smaller trade uh, trade for the go out of this coin. What he was just talking about too, by the way, was um, pivot points. This is an actual strategy. Cool. So pivot points in terms of retracing and, and changing by 50% here, trading this amount. I'm sorry. Right. Hey, you, you want to toss me host back? Um, sure. Where? How do I? Do? Okay. There you are. Toss, toss back because to you. Your, it adds throttling your internet too much. I think. Yeah. There it is. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Because we just had a. Um, I was just buffering for a sec. I don't want it to boot you off. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Oh, uh, kick me host. Okay, there, there, there it is. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, okay sorry, uh, could you cut out for a couple minutes? So what I was saying is, what you explained how it retraces a certain percentage, like half of the last drop and so on and so forth, those are actually called pivot points. So those that's an actual, um, I guess it's got its own terminology and books written about it, <laughs> in case people care. Uh-huh, all right. Uh, so yeah, basically this 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 setting, if you oh, if you only can write it down, it's it's gonna gonna be a good one for you. And uh, as, if if you turn it on for a coin which you think is gonna go up, uh, it will, and it doesn't. What happens? It just just triggers a stop loss at one percent or a percent you're 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 gonna give it, and it's just gonna stop. Like for this one, it did already trigger me a stop loss at some point in, in the past. Um, on 20th, yeah, two days ago. And since then it's been, I guess it's been in, in, in a downtrend slant, uh, slide. And now it's now it's now it's good to, to play with. And I think it's gonna be good to play with for another half a day. So, you know, uh, why not as well do it yourself? I can also talk about uh, another type of bots which are based on indicator consensus, but that's gonna be probably in, in another uh, Let's do that on another session. Yeah, because that that one is also interesting to to take a look at. But yeah, this is this is it. This is the whole setting for for an uptrend in uh, coin, which will produce some results. I might actually cool. as well run it myself. Yeah, let's do it. And then um, if you guys want to start popping in questions, if you've got any, uh, try and keep them out of the Discord. I think most people who are still here. Uh, are solely here on the live stream. Just pop them in the chat box. I know there's a tad bit of delay, um, but yeah, and, and just drop them here. We'll answer them really quick and then wrap up. Really appreciate everyone joining us. If you do want to get the Haspot, we have a discount set up through Crypto Junkies. We were one of the very first people to start really promoing uh, Haspot. Uh, has online bots uh, on YouTube, which is great because their community and their their service that they offer has uh, really, really gotten better and better over these last uh, three, four months. They're turning into a, just an amazing, um, amazing provider. So, uh, really happy to uh, to work with them in this capacity and provide you with a discount code. It's Crypto Junkie. It'll give you about twenty percent off, depending on it's based off BTC. So it's twenty percent, give or take. And uh, that applies to all licenses, all levels, guys. Go ahead and check it out and um, use that promo code. And then, um, yeah, any quick questions that we have? Otherwise, we'll wrap up. You, some of you might want to replay this. And definitely, if you haven't joined the Discord, there's a Discord chat link. It's free to join underneath the video, underneath the stream. That's where you're going to get screenshots given all the time from not only Cosmos, but other people in the community, uh, simply because they believe in sharing. So, um, I know a lot of communities don't do that and try and put stuff behind paywalls and it just makes it really, really hard to learn. And so, um, yeah, anyway, so, uh, that is, uh, that's oh. all there. You can join it. It's free. And one, I just wanted to say one more thing, uh, if that's all right. Sure. Um, when the price is going up, uh, or the price is going down, we are having RSI sliding. Uh, up and down as well, which means that it will go outside of the range we usually set it up for. Uh, and that's not a bad thing, to be honest. It's a good thing, uh, especially when we are having an uptrend. 
and we set up the cell properly, uh, we should always what, uh, sort of when I when I do right now, my approach to bots is like I know what's going to happen in the future, most of mo mo mostly, and I know how the RSI is going to behave at that period, and I would normally just tune it for the for what I'm expecting from this coin to do, and in this case, I would definitely up a bit its its buy its buy level. I, I would I would up it to even higher the, than the last uh, like buy signals if if you if you put them here. So 59, maybe 62 ish because it is gonna go a bit higher. And sell I'm gonna leave at, at that because sell is uh, controlled by three indicators here already. It's not gonna give you any more sell signals if I just change, if, if, I, if I don't, uh, if I allow it to go even higher, it's, it's just gonna give the same amount of uh, sell signals, which is good. But for buy, it doesn't have one indicator. So I'll give 62, I guess, for this case. And that's that's gonna guarantee me the coin will be bought at some point uh, once it touches the lower band or, or the middle band here, when before another up. And if there's, that, there's a down happening, we always have our stop loss which should be lower than one as we've seen probably 0 0.7. Should, they should do it. Less stop loss, the better it is. And I think I've done. Oh, that's pretty much all of it. Cool. Um, and then uh, the macro that you were talking, <clears throat> the macro that you were talking about, um, where do you, you said you, you were wanted to share that. Do you want to put that in a discord maybe? Macro, what was that? Um, what were you using in the background? It's called Catalan Recorder. It's a plugin for, it does have one for Google Chrome and one for Safari uh, or, or Firefox. And what it does, it, it literally records your actions on a, on a page in a uh, list. Like if you press a backtest button, it will just write down, do the backtest button. You can then stack them up into behaviors and use some timeouts or pauses to, to make them slower. And it will just do backtesting for you, for instance, automatically pressing the same button for as many copies as you've made for it. I mean, I got like five or 600 copies. You make a hotkey to that function, right? I'm not sure about hotkeys. I just open the plugin and press play on one of those uh, setups I've made already. And okay. it does backtesting quite well. It doesn't uh, take the focus away from the uh, uh, value you're working with. So it's very, it's a lot more comfortable. You just, uh, in, in some cases you can use your keyboard up and down to change the value, like links for RSI or buy and sell levels. Keyboard is the, is the best uh, way to go. I mean, like up and down is the best way to go with them. It's faster. It takes less actions. It's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't disturb the process, uh, allows you to concentrate much better. Uh, yeah, so that app is quite useful. But if you don't use that and you go with backtesting, your your firstly your your fingers are gonna get tired, and then your wrist is gonna get a bit uncomfortable, and it just takes so much time to move your mouse all the time that you just press the button. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send the link uh, and I'll share this uh, export for yeah, backtesting. Yeah, we'll post it up. For one day for two no worries, days. guys. Yeah. And then, guys, if you want to follow along, Cosmos on Twitter, he posts up screenshots of his actions all the time. It's just twitter.com slash Cosmos bots. Okay, twitter.com slash Cosmos bots. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll get to follow him. Give him, a, give him a follow. Give this video a like, share it, save it, download it, whatever you want to do to uh, make sure that you, uh, you get this and you start going through it yourself. All right, guys. Uh, that's it for today. Cosmos, thanks so much, bro. It's like it's almost been two hours. We'll have to do another one again soon. And then I definitely want to bring you back on for a little maybe round table or fun, you know, live stream fun where we're all kind of doing bots uh, together. Definitely want to bring you back on for that. But thanks again so much. All right. Okay. Thank you too for inviting me over. Yeah, no worries. And thanks for joining us. There. And um, we, got a, we got the next stream coming up on... Sunday, I believe. Yes, the next stream is coming up on Sunday. So check that out. That'll be about precious metals, gold, silver, the economy, global economy, things like that. So very, very different from today's session. But thanks again for jumping on and uh, hope you guys have a great day.